Hello and welcome to this video on IELTS letter writing. In this video, I'll give you some general points about IELTS general training writing task one, and then I'll be focusing on formal letters. I'll also tell you about important assessment criteria and the common mistakes to avoid when answering IELTS general training writing task one questions. As you probably know, in the IELTS general training writing task one, you'll be asked to write a letter of at least 150 words in 20 minutes. This could either be a formal letter or an informal letter. We discussed informal letters in another video, so if you haven't watched it, I recommend you watch that video first and then come back and watch this video about formal letters. Also, please feel free to give us comments about our videos and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you won't miss other videos in the future. All right, let's get started with formal letters. Formal letters are written to people you don't know. For example, the customer service manager of a clothing company. You have probably also heard of semi-formal letters. These are letters you write to people you know, but are not really close to. You may have a professional relationship with them. Someone like a colleague or your boss. Or you could have a personal relationship with them, but still you're not close to them. Let's say a neighbor, for example. Anyways, since you are not close to these people, the tone of your letter must be formal again, though semi-formal letters differ slightly from formal letters in terms of their opening and closing salutations. But don't worry about it now, I'll explain it all in more detail in a few minutes. Just like any other writing task, what matters most when writing a formal letter is that you understand the question first. Then plan your response thoroughly to make sure you cover all parts of the task. And make sure to use the right tone when you write your response. Also, don't forget to check your letter at the end to make sure you have written a clear purpose and each bullet point is presented, highlighted, and extended and check for any vocab and grammar mistakes. If you have sentences with the same idea, then try to join them, if appropriate, to make complex sentences. Now, what do I mean when I say understand the question? General training task one always follows the same format. There is always a scenario which describes the situation. Then there is the recipient of the letter. That's how you know if you need to write a formal letter or an informal one. And finally, there are three bullet points that you need to write about. To be able to get a high score, you need to describe the purpose of your letter. Without a clear purpose, you won't get more than a five for task achievement. That's how important the purpose is. Overall, keep in mind that your purpose statement needs to be directly relevant to the scenario, but it doesn't necessarily need to include or mention details from all the bullet points. Also, make sure that your purpose naturally leads into the main body where you write about the bullet points. I'll tell you more about how to write a purpose in a bit, but before that, let's review the structure of a letter. The structure of task one is quite simple. Since the question always follows the same format, you can use the same strategy to outline any letter you're supposed to write. You always begin with a greeting or an opening salutation. Then you clearly and directly state the purpose of the letter in the opening paragraph. After that, you present highlight and extend each bullet point in one separate paragraph. In other words, you address each bullet point at the beginning of a paragraph and then continue the paragraph by adding supporting details about that bullet point. Finally, you write a rounding off statement, a closing salutation, and your name. Now, let's cover the different components of a letter in more detail. The first thing you need is a greeting. 
Here, you mention the recipient of the letter. Since you're going to write formal or semi-formal letters, you can always write dear sir slash madam if you don't know the person's name for formal letters or dear Mr. X or dear Ms. Y if you know the person's name in semi-formal letters. You don't need to learn or memorize any other phrases. The next thing you need to write is the opening paragraph where you clearly state the purpose of your letter. This is normally a very short paragraph, probably one or two sentences long, but of utmost importance. To present a purpose in formal letters, you can use phrases like, I am writing this letter with regard to blah blah blah. I am writing to bring to your attention blah blah blah. I'm writing to inform you that blah blah blah. Or I'm writing to express my dissatisfaction with blah blah blah. Now here's a list of some common purposes for writing formal letters. So for example, if you want to write a letter to complain to someone about something, you can write the purpose like this. I am writing to express my dissatisfaction with the meal at your establishment last night, or I am writing to complain about the unacceptable state of the men's changing room at your sports center. So pause your video, Take a look at this chart and then play your video when you're done. Then you will need three more paragraphs, each to discuss one of the bullet points in the question. Keep in mind that these three paragraphs should preferably be of the same length. Make sure to include sufficient details to support each bullet point. Also, remember that a nice flow would increase your chances of getting a higher score. So make sure there's a smooth and logical transition from one paragraph to the next. Also, as I mentioned in the previous video, some bullet points may include plurals or the word and. In this case, don't forget to fully address all parts of the bullet points. For instance, if the bullet point is explain what problems the damaged product has caused you, you must explain about at least two problems. Or when the bullet point is describe the product you purchased and its condition upon arrival, you need to both describe the product and its condition upon arrival. So after you cover the bullet points, you should sign off with a rounding off statement. Some examples of these for a formal letter include, I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to receiving your response. I await your prompt service. I thank you for your consideration. Or please respond at your earliest convenience. Now, be careful to choose a rounding off statement that matches the purpose of your letter. The rounding off statement is then followed by a closing salutation. It's not necessary to memorize various salutations. Since you need only one closing salutation at the end of your letter, knowing just one phrase for each type of letter will do. So if you're writing a formal letter, write yours faithfully. And if the letter is semi-formal, you can just say kind regards in the end. And finally, because you're writing a formal letter, you need to write your full name. That's your first name plus your last name. And that's it. You can use this strategy to write any formal or semi-formal letter in the IELTS General Training Writing Task 1. Just make sure that you spend enough time planning your writing so you can come up with sufficient supporting details to include in your letter. Now, a very important point. Do not underestimate the importance of planning. Without proper planning, you are very unlikely to achieve your desired score.
If you start writing your response without creating an outline first, chances are you will not cover some parts of the task, or you may not be able to back up your main points with sufficient details. Even worse, you might include details that are not relevant to the bullet points. When you're writing your letter, your main focus should be on organizing your ideas in a clear, logical manner. You shouldn't come up with ideas on the spot, nor should you be overly concerned with vocab and grammar during the initial writing. The thinking and outlining should happen before you start writing your letter, during the planning stage. So likewise, vocab and grammar checks should be saved for after you've completed the draft, during the revision stage. By the time you begin writing your letter, you should already have all the necessary ideas in place, having thought them through beforehand. Your main task then is to ensure these ideas are logically presented and that they adequately address all parts of the task. Now that you know what task one questions look like and how you should structure your letter, let's take a look at some examples of formal and semi-formal letter prompts and practice understanding the question as well as writing a clear purpose. Purpose is what you must not forget to include in your opening paragraph. The purpose of a formal letter could include inquiry, that is, asking for information or something, recommendation, like recommending a colleague for a position, application, as in a job application, complaint, to complain about something that's happened to you, and so on. Whatever the reason, make sure you clearly present it in the first paragraph of your letter. Otherwise, you will lose marks in task achievement. To figure out what you need to write as the purpose of your letter, you need to look at both the scenario and the bullet points. In this example, the manager of an insurance company is the person you should write the letter to. So obviously, your tone must be formal. And you need to start your letter with Dear Sir or slash Madam. Let's read the question prompt together. On a recent holiday, you lost a valuable item. Fortunately, you have travel insurance to cover the cost of anything lost. Write a letter to the manager of your insurance company. In your letter, describe the item you lost, explain how you lost it, and tell the insurance company what you would like them to do. So based on the scenario and the last bullet point, it's quite clear why you should be writing this letter. You want the insurance company to pay for the item you lost. So your purpose would be something like this. I am writing to report that I lost my Apple Watch while surfing on my holiday in Honolulu last month. And since I purchased the travel insurance your company offers for the entire length of the trip, I'd like to make a claim. With this statement, you both briefly describe the situation and say what you wish the insurance company to do. Now let's look at another example. In this case, you're supposed to write to your manager, and you know your manager, of course. This is considered a semi-formal letter, because no matter how friendly your manager might be, it's still your manager. As for the greeting, simply begin with, Dear Mr. Jones, and remember not to worry about the first name. Let's read the question prompt together. You're working for a company. You need to take some time off work, and want to ask your manager about this. Write a letter to your manager. In your letter, explain why you want to take time off work, give details of the amount of time you need, and suggest how your work will be covered while you are away. Now, looking at the scenario and the bullet points, you can figure out that the reason you're writing the letter is to ask your boss for permission to take some time off and ensure him that your work will be covered while you're away. Therefore, you can write your purpose like this. I am writing this letter to request you to grant me a few days off work and explain how my work is going to be covered in that period.
Now let's see some more examples of how the purpose of a letter can be clearly presented at the beginning. Let's read this question prompt. Your local council is considering closing a sports and leisure center that it runs in order to save money. Write a letter to the local council. In your letter, give details of how you and your friends or family use the center, explain why the sports and leisure center is important for the local community, and describe the possible effects on local people if the center closes. Here, it seems like you should be worried about the closing of the center, and as a result, you should write a letter to express your concern. Since you don't know the person, you know that you have to write a formal letter. So you begin with, Dear Sir or Madam. And this is how you can clearly state the purpose at the start of the letter. I'm writing to express my concerns regarding the proposed closure of our local sports and leisure center by the council as a cost-saving measure and to discuss the impact this decision could have on our community. This purpose is relevant to the scenario and the bullet points in the question and it makes it clear why you're writing the letter. Let's look at another topic. There have been several complaints about the reception area where visitors to your company arrive. Your manager has asked you to suggest how the reception area could be improved. Write a letter to your manager. In your letter, describe the complaints that have been made, say why the reception area is important, and suggest how the reception area could be improved. Here, you need to describe the complaints that have been made and to give some suggestions that can improve the reception area in your company. This time, you're writing to your manager. This is a semi-formal letter because you know your manager's name. So start with Dear Mr. Jones and here's the purpose. I'm writing to outline the complaints that have been made about the reception area, which is where the first contact of our clients with the company takes place, and also to suggest several improvements to be implemented. This is one way to present your purpose. This purpose refers to the complaints made and solutions to address those complaints. Let's read another example together. You work at home and have a problem with a piece of equipment that you use for your job. Write a letter to the shop or company which supplied the equipment. In your letter, describe the problem with the equipment explain how this problem is affecting your work, and say what you want the shop or company to do. Now, it's quite clear that the reason you want to write this letter is to report the problem and get the shop to either fix or replace the equipment. First, you need to write Dear Sir slash Madam as your greeting because you don't know the person's name and this is a formal letter. Then you could present the purpose of your letter by saying that you want to complain about the product you've purchased. So here is the purpose. I'm writing to report a problem with the Sony headphones I bought from your store, which is hindering my work from home, and to request its immediate repair or replacement. Notice that the purpose includes a specific product. Sony headphones. Naming a specific product makes your letter seem real-like. So don't just write, I'm writing to complain about a piece of equipment that I bought from your shop. This statement of purpose is not as natural as the previous one. Plus, it doesn't say what you want the store to do. Now I'm going to give you three more topics. I want you to pause your video, write a greeting as well as a purpose for each topic, and then play the video again to check your answers.
So now you know the format of general training task one questions and also the structure you need to write your letter. So it's time to write a formal letter together. Here's the topic. You missed an international flight due to a problem at the airport. Write a letter to the airline. In your letter, describe what happened that caused you to miss your flight, explain how missing your flight impacted you, and say what you would like the airline to do. Let's analyze the question first and then plan our letter. Obviously, this is a formal letter since we don't know the name of the person we're writing to. So we need a formal tone and the opening salutation is Dear Sir or Madam. Now, here's the scenario again in the question. You missed your flight because of a problem at the airport. It caused you a problem. Now you probably want the airline to compensate you for what happened. So the reason for writing this letter should be complaining about the situation and asking for compensation. I'm going to start with, I am writing to express my dissatisfaction regarding an alteration your company made due to which I missed my connecting flight to New York. I would like you to compensate me for the additional costs I had to pay. This briefly explains the situation an alteration made by the airline and missing my flight and clearly states the purpose of my letter, expressing my dissatisfaction and saying what I would like the airline to do. Now I need to come up with some ideas for each bullet point. I should remind you of the importance of planning. The more detailed your plan, the higher your chances of getting a good score. So never say I'll think of the main points now and I'll come up with the details later as I write the response. Without planning, you might forget to address certain key aspects of the question, leading to an incomplete response. You might also get stuck halfway through trying to figure out what to write next. You might even end up repeating the same ideas or points due to a lack of clear direction and you might even lose track of your argument and end up giving a weak argument. Therefore, think about all the details you need in the planning stage so that when you get to writing your response, you only focus on just connecting your ideas together. Now, let's get to it. As for the first bullet point, describe what happened that caused you to miss your flight, I'm going to say I missed my connecting flight to my destination due to a delay in the first leg of my journey. Now, this is the main point. So first, I need to give details of my flight so they would know what I'm talking about. It was a flight from Moscow on May 15th at 1915. Then, I'll say because of the long wait of the security checks, there was a one hour delay which led to my late arrival at Berlin Airport. As a result, I missed my connecting flight to New York. The second bullet point is explain how missing your flight impacted you. I'm going to explain that missing my flight caused me problems at work and I had to pay extra money. I also need some supporting details. I'm going to add that my company had to send someone else instead, which put my job at risk because my manager was mad at me for not going. Also, I had to pay for the accommodation in Berlin as well as my flight back to Toronto myself. Finally, regarding the third bullet point, say what you would like the airline to do. I could say, I want the airline to compensate me for the money I had to pay for the accommodation and flight back home. I also need some supporting details. And as for the supporting details, I'll tell them that I spent 200 euros for my hotel in Berlin and I paid 450 euros for the flight back to Toronto and then I'll give him my credit card number for the refund. Now that I have my main points and supporting details, I can start writing my body paragraphs. 
In the first body paragraph about describe what happened that caused you to miss your flight, I will put my ideas together like this. I missed my connecting flight to New York due to a delay in my first leg from Moscow to Berlin. I had booked a flight on May 15th, which was scheduled to leave Moscow International Airport at 19.15. However, because of the long wait at your strict security check, there was a one hour delay. As a result, I arrived at Berlin International Airport an hour later than planned and consequently missed my connecting flight to New York. And that's it. Now, in the next paragraph, I will arrange the ideas I've already thought of about the second bullet point, which said, explain how missing your flight impacted you. Notice how I have linked the paragraphs. The previous paragraph ended with, consequently, missed my flight. And this one starts with missing that flight. For the sake of coherence, make sure your paragraphs are linked to each other and or they are organized logically. Let's read it together. Missing that flight not only caused me trouble at work, but it also made me pay extra money. Since I couldn't attend the conference I was supposed to speak at, my company had to send another executive to New York. This has put my job at risk because my manager was furious when he found out I was not going to make it to the conference. In addition, I had to pay out of my pocket for my hotel room in Berlin, as well as my flight home to Toronto. In the third paragraph, I will ask the company to compensate me for the additional expenses I had to pay for myself because it was their fault that I missed my flight. Again, see how I've arranged the ideas. The previous paragraph ended with the trouble I went through. And this one begins with reference to those problems plus what I want the company to do to make it up to me. Here it is. I hope you will compensate me for the hotel and flight expenses that I had to pay myself as a result of missing my connecting flight. I had to pay 200 euros for my accommodation in Berlin and 450 euros for my flight back to Toronto. My credit card number is 2412-7512-3412-3456. I would appreciate it if you could make the transfer at your earliest convenience. I will sign off now simply by adding, I look forward to your response. Then I'll use the closing salutation, yours faithfully, since it's a formal letter, and write my full name at the end. Our letter is complete. Please pause your video and read the whole letter. Play your video when you're done. As I said earlier in this video, revision is very important. You must allocate some time to check your response after you've written it. This is simply because everybody makes mistakes. You can never get everything right the first time. You'll have to go back, read your work, and make the necessary changes. Now I'm going to give you a checklist so that when you're finished writing the letter, you can use this checklist to make sure everything is okay. First, make sure that the greeting is appropriate. Look at the recipient in the question prompt. If it's someone you don't know, write dear sir or madam. And if it's someone you know, except for friends and relatives, write dear Mr. Jones, for example. The first name doesn't matter, of course. You just need to write dear with a last name. I should remind you that for informal letters which are written to friends and relatives, we have another video that you can watch. For the second item in the checklist, you should read your opening paragraph, 
and check if you have clearly stated the purpose. You almost always need to begin with, I am writing to blah 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 to show the purpose of your letter. When writing your purpose, keep it short and to the point. It should directly address the scenario presented in the task. You could also link it to the bullet points, but remember, you don't need to go into every detail. Instead, provide a brief overview or description of what you'll discuss in the letter. Next, read the body paragraphs. Check if you have provided sufficient detail to support each bullet point. There should be nothing vague about your letter. Everything must be crystal clear. Do not leave anything open to interpretation. Remember that you won't be there to explain things to the examiner when he or she is marking your writing, so make sure your ideas are arranged logically so that everyone could easily understand them without having to ask any questions for clarification. Next, your letter must be written in paragraphs. To make paragraphing clear, leave an empty line between paragraphs. Another point is that you should check the link between paragraphs. One way to create coherence is by starting a paragraph with the same idea you ended the previous paragraph with. Alternatively, you could also make a reference to the bullet points to start each paragraph. But in general, make sure each paragraph has a topic sentence that introduces the main point of that paragraph. To learn more about topic sentences, watch our previous videos. All you have to do is to follow us on YouTube and you will have access to all our videos. Next, don't forget to sign off using an appropriate rounding off statement. Then, if the letter is to someone you don't know, like a formal letter, end it with yours faithfully. And if it's to someone you know, like in a semi-formal letter, write kind regards. Finally, don't forget to write your full name. Check the language you've used. Since you're writing a formal letter, you're not allowed to use contractions such as I'm writing. You must write it in full. I am writing. Also, in formal and semi-formal letters, do not use spoken English or words and phrases which might be commonly used in everyday life. For example, give me my money back would be inappropriate for a formal letter. Instead, you could write, I would like you to refund my money. In addition, make sure you use formal language throughout the letter. Here's a list of some informal versus formal words and phrases. To avoid inconsistencies in your tone, make sure to choose the right words. Please pause the video and review the list of words. Identify the formal and informal ones to maintain a consistent tone in your letters. Note that this is a basic list, and further study is essential for a deeper understanding of formal and informal language. Next, check your spelling and correct any errors you may find. Also, if you have repeated the word several times, think of a synonym to replace that word. For example, if you write, I had to rent an apartment the first time, don't write, I would like you to compensate me for the apartment I rented. Instead, you can say, I would like you to compensate me for my accommodation. Be careful though, make sure the synonyms you use convey the same meaning. For instance, Although company and manufacturer are near synonyms, if you use manufacturer instead of company when you're writing to an insurance company, you will lose marks for lexical resource simply because an insurance company does not manufacture anything. So manufacturer would not be a suitable replacement here. If you're not 100% sure about the meaning of a word or synonym, it's best not to use it, because you will most probably make a mistake.
Finally, check your grammar. First, look for possible errors and correct them. Then, look for simple sentences you've written which are close related and can be changed into a complex sentence. Remember, you're supposed to use a mix of simple and complex sentences. So, if your answer to these questions in the checklist is yes, then you're very likely to get a high score on the IELTS General Training Writing Task 1. Now, let's read a student's writing together and see how we can improve it. Here is the topic. You have been invited to attend an admissions interview for a prestigious college. Unfortunately, you cannot come at the proposed time due to a previous appointment. Write a letter to an admissions tutor. In your letter, introduce yourself and state your interest in the program. Apologize and offer to come at a different time and ask how long the interview will be and if you will have to take an exam sample. And here is the letter the student has written. Please pause your video, read this letter, and try to find the problems in the letter. We will then go over it together. First, I want to remind you very quickly how to write this letter step by step. This letter should have four paragraphs. In the first paragraph, you should state the purpose of the letter. In the second paragraph, you should respond to the first bullet point. In the third paragraph, you should address the second bullet point. And in the fourth paragraph, you should respond to the third bullet point and then close the letter with a rounding off statement. Now let's focus on the first paragraph where you have to write your purpose. For writing the purpose, you should answer the question of why you're writing this letter. After reading the topic, you would know that you're writing this letter to let the admissions team know that you cannot make it to the interview at the proposed time due to a prior commitment, and you also want to request a different interview time. Looking at the bullet points, the first one asks you to introduce yourself and state your interest in the program. It makes sense to introduce yourself at the beginning of the letter, so you should do that in the first paragraph along with your purpose. So your purpose in the first paragraph should start with your name and then say that you can't go to the interview because of an appointment earlier and you need to reschedule. Then in the second paragraph, which addresses the first bullet point, you can discuss your interest in the program. You also need to expand your answer and say why you are interested in the program. In the third paragraph, you need to apologize for not being able to attend the interview as initially scheduled and offer to come at a different time. You also need to again expand your answer. In the fourth paragraph, you need to ask about the duration of the interview and whether you need to take an exam. Again, you need to expand your response by providing details. Now let's review the student's letter. The first issue is that the letter is only three paragraphs long and it seems like a paragraph is either missing or misplaced. In the first paragraph, the student mentions that they're writing to thank the admissions team for the invitation, and then the student says that he's interested in the program. The problem here is that the student has not understood the topic, and therefore this is not the right purpose. Plus, showing interest in the program refers to the first bullet point, and it should be stated in the second paragraph and not in the first paragraph. So, we're going to move down the sentence to the second paragraph and write a new first paragraph with the right purpose and your name at the beginning. The purpose is to inform them about the scheduling conflict and request a new interview time. Also, it would be more natural for the student to introduce himself at the beginning of the letter. So, the first paragraph needs a rewrite like this. My name is Tim Wilford. 
I'm writing to inform you that, unfortunately, I am unable to attend the proposed interview due to a previous appointment that I cannot reschedule. And I would also like to request a new date for my interview. In the second paragraph that corresponds to the first bullet point, the first part where the student introduces himself is taken care of. And the student should only state his interest in the program, and of course, he should extend and explain about his interest. So, this is how we can change this paragraph. I am very interested in the program, and I believe it would be a wonderful opportunity for me to further my academic career. I've been interested in biology ever since I was in high school, which is why I chose to do a bachelor's degree in biology. Now I cannot wait to start my master's program at your renowned college. I am certain that enrolling in this program will significantly advance my academic career, thanks to the guidance of your esteemed professors and the access to state-of-the-art facilities. In the third paragraph, the student apologizes and offers to reschedule. But this is not enough and needs to be expanded. Remember that you're supposed to write about the bullet points and then expand your answer. So this is how I change it a bit. I apologize for any inconvenience this may cause. I had made this appointment with my doctor a long time ago, and I'm afraid it cannot be rescheduled. But after May 3rd, I'll be available at any time that is convenient for you. I would appreciate it if you could arrange another date for my interview. Finally, for the last bullet point, ask how long the interview will be and if you will have to take an exam sample, which again includes the word and. We're supposed to request some information about the length of the interview and other requirements such as an exam sample. Again, the student has simply copied the bullet point and written the exact same words in the third paragraph. There is another problem with this paragraph. The closing should be in a separate paragraph at the end of the letter, so we should move this sentence to the next line. Let's change the wording and add some details to it. I would also like to request some information about the interview. Firstly, I was wondering if you could inform me how long the interview will last. I want to make sure I will not plan anything that will overlap with the interview. Secondly, if I am required to take an exam sample, please let me know so I can be better prepared for the interview. In addition, although both I look forward to, and I am looking forward to, are commonly used at the end of letters, the simple present tense sounds more formal. So, since we're writing a formal letter, I'm going to change the tense of this sentence to I look forward to hearing from you soon, and thank you for considering my application. Finally, we tend to use sincerely when we know the person's name. Otherwise, faithfully would be a better choice. In this case, since we don't know the admissions tutor's name, we need to replace sincerely with faithfully. Yours faithfully, Tim Wilford. All right, now this letter has a clear purpose. It has an appropriate format. It covers all the bullet points. And sufficiently develops them. It uses the right tone and as a result, can score higher on the IELTS test. Please pause your video and read the revised letter. I hope you'll find this lesson useful. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos.